Hello friends, welcome to Text Query. Today, I am going to give you a brief introduction about Wisdom. Today, our agenda will be to discuss about what is Wisdom file, why do we need Wisdom file, and what is the structure of a Wisdom file. As a web service automation manual tester, you don't need to worry about how to develop a Wisdom file and what its structure. But I want you to have a basic knowledge of this because I want your fundamentals and terminology should be clear before you move on to the next level. So let's talk about our first topic. What is WSDL? A WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language. As its name suggests, it is used to describe a web service. In a layman language, WSDL is just like a postcard. Like a postcard has the address of the person who delivered the postcard and contain some information what the person wants to communicate. Similarly, a visual file has the address of the web service and has all the information about all the functionality that client wants. Technically, visual is an XML standard document that is used to describe a web service. That XML document has all the information that is required by client applications to understand what the web service actually does. Now the question comes, what kind of information it contains? A visual file has all the available operations which are exposed by the web services and their input and output structures are predefined in the visual file. It also contains the information about uh, operations can be called on which protocols like that operation you want to call on SOAP protocol or HTTP protocol that is also predefined in the visual file. And it also contains the information about the location of a web services. This is where your web services will actually run. And it has a, a lot more details about the web services that is actually required by client applications to understand what the web services actually does. A visual file itself can look very complex to any user, but it contains all the necessary information that client applications would require to use the relevant web service. So let's move on to our next topic, why visual file? A visual file, as I explained you in my previous slide, a visual file is nothing but a plain XML standard document. The reason that it is in XML is so that the file can be read by any programming language. Suppose we have four applications, those are developed on different platforms like the first application is developed on java platform the second application is developed on sap platform and the third application is developed on python platform and the fourth application developed on dotnet platform as visual is an xml document so this can be understood by java this can be understood by sap this can be understood by python and this can be understood by dotnet so a single web service can be consumed by all the applications, those are developed on different platforms. So hence, the amount of coding effort is greatly reduced with the help of visual file. So that's the reason we use the visual file. This is the general structure of a visual file. If you will look at the visual file, the uppermost tag you will find as the definition tag and under the definition tag, you will find the type tag, message tag, port type tag and binding tab and the service tag. So let me show you a visual file of a BLG service. Look at this. This is the visual file of a BLG service. As I just explained you, the definition is the uppermost tag. If I close this, so this is my definition tag. Under this definition tag, we have the type tag, message tag, the port type tag, binding tag and the service tag. Now I'll discuss about what kind of informations are contained in these tags. So let's start with the type tag. Type tag is used to define all the complex data types, which will be used to define the type of data in the message exchange between the client application and the web service. Now you know about the simple data types like string, integers, float values, etc, etc. Now what is the complex data type? Complex data type are nothing but a data structure of these simple data types. So let me give you an example of a complex data type structure. Suppose there is a complex data type, the employee data type. It has two elements, employee name and the employee ID. Employee name is of string type and employee ID is of 
integer types. Together, they form a data structure, which then become a complex data type. So let's go back to the visual file of BLG service, and we'll see what is there in the type tag. Let me click on this. So this is our type tag. The type tag has the three complex data types. The complex type, the get bank type. It has the element BLG that is of string type. Other data type is the get bank response type. It has the element details of type DNS details type, and and this details type complex data type has a structure which has four elements. The busy song that is of string type, the big code that is a string type, ORT that is a string type, and BLG is a string type. So basically, we have two complex data structure over here. One is with data structure with element BLG that is a string type. Now other data structure is it has the four elements: the busy song, big ORT, and BLG code. So let's go back to our slide. Now, what this message tag contains? Message tag is used to define the message which is exchanged between the client application and the web server. These messages will explain the input and output operations which can be performed by the web service. So, let's see the structure of a message tag. The message tag is consists of a input and output messages, but it is not clearly defined. In the message tag, like which message will be used as an input and which message will be used as an output. So this is the general structure of a message tag. It has the message and the name of the message and the part. Part is nothing but is used to define the structure of the message. Either we can directly define the variables in this part, or we can define the structure in the type tag. And we can use its reference in the message tag. So let's go back to the visual file. So this visual file has two messages: message one and the message two. Here we have used the reference of the complex data type that we that we defined in the type tag. And it has two messages. One is referring to TNS get bank data structure. And other is referring to TNS get bank response data structure. Now let's talk about the port type tag. The port type tag is used to encapsulate every input and output message into one logical operation. The ports are used in Visual to define a one complete operation, which is offered by the web service. Together, the input and output message form is known as a one complete operation. So this is the structure of a port type tag. It will have the information about the message tag, like which message tag will be used as an input message and which message tag will be used as output message, and a complete set of input and output messages. We call it as an operation. Suppose we have a port type name is employee information port type, and it has a operation. The name is get employee name. It has the input message, so we'll send a data as a Employee name request, and we'll receive the output message as a employee name response. So this is the one operation provided by the web service. In addition to the port type element, there is also a binding element which is used to define how the message will be transferred. Binding, in simple terms, information which the client application used to actually bind itself to the web service. Once it actually bound to the web service, it then has the ability to call. The various operations that are exposed by the web services. In binding tag, we basically define like you want to call that operation by which protocol. You want to call that operation by HTTP protocol or SOAP protocol. That will be defined in binding tag. So now let's go back to the visual file. So this is the visual file. So first let's talk about the port type tag. In the port type tag. The name of the port is BLG service port type, and it has one operation. The name of the operation is get bank. It has one input message and one output message, and combination of this will form a operation, as I already explained you. Here we have given the reference of the messages. Like the input message will be the get bank, and the output message will be the get bank response. 
so this is all about the port type tag now let's talk about the binding tag in this visual file we have three binding tags let's look all of them one by one so let's look at the first binding tag this binding tag is bind with the port type blg service port type and it will be transport by swap 11 protocol and this will be the operation will be the called the get bank operations now let's go and look at the second binding tag this binding tag is also connect with the same port type and it will also be called using the SOAP protocol and the same operations we want to call now let's look at the third binding tag this third binding tag is also tagged with the same port type but it will be called using HTTP protocol with the POST method and the operations we are going to call is the get bank operation so this is all about the binding tags if you want your web service to be dynamic so that a same operation can be called over a so protocols or can be called over http pro protocols to serve that purpose we need to have a different binding tags in the visual file so now let's talk about the last tag that is the service tag a service tag is a name given to the web service itself Initially, when a client applications make a call to the web service, it will do by calling the name of the web service. For example, a web service can be located in an address such as this is the address of the web service and the service tag will actually have the URL defined, defined as this, which will actually tell the client application that there is a web service available at this location. So web service tag is nothing but it will give a detailed information about the endpoint where this operation should be called like we have different different servers we have a production server we have a development server we have a QA server now your web service on your local machine that is a client machine want to connect on a production server want to connect on a development server or want to connect on a QA servers so the information about that server will be defined in this service tag so this was all about the general structure of a visual file Hope you would have understand. Don't forget to be awesome. Please subscribe, like and share. Thank you.